What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Igmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we kind of looked around the base at things that I had changed. And since then, I have changed just a little bit more. Nothing too crazy. This is our liquid glass thing that we set up last time. Um, I just saw that we had some regular Fluix and me dense smart cables around. I've replaced those. And off these, I've decided to put some ME smart cables so we can tell how many channels are being used per one of these wires since we're just using the regular wire and not the smart for everywhere. Yeah, I kind of feel like if you have these that show the channels everywhere, it just feels too cluttered or whatever. So yeah, I just like using those at the connection. So when we can see that it goes up to eight of eight channels, then we can just pull one off the side here and then split channels up that way. So yeah, everywhere that we're making connections that I have found, I've tried doing that, adding these uh, smart cables. So we can just kind of see which ones are using more than others. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved our uh, sequential fabricators down here that's making salt and that's being turned into chlorine. Yeah, I moved that downstairs. That was previously upstairs, just right over here. Uh, and then I, I don't think I talked about this, but I did add a second sequential fabricator. So we are producing more salt than what we are using. Yeah, and that's being melted right here into the brine, which gets turned over into sodium and chlorine. And then the chlorine gets concentrated into the liquid chlorine. And we're storing it here. Um, I put a fluid storage bus on this thing. Yep, so now the system knows about that. And then we're just exporting it right up above us. Uh, it's, I know it's kind of hard to see. But yeah, right up above us, we have the fluid export bus that's going into this guy right here. Mm -hmm. So liquid chlorine. Now, one thing to note on this liquid chlorine, you can't put it into a bucket to click it into here. I did have to make myself a dropper. Yeah, one of these things, a gauge dropper. Uh, you can fill that up full of a bucket from the tank, and then you can click it into here, yeah, to set the, the filter or whatever. So yeah, that's just one thing to note about doing that. But yeah, we're starting to get rid of like some of these random things that we placed up here, making room for like these bigger machines and other such things, more advanced technology. I like it. Uh, this thing over here feels a little out of place. We might end up moving it depending if we run out of space, but it is kind of a pain to set up because of all the water wheels and things that I had to do. So as long as we don't need the room, we're just going to leave that one alone for now. So last episode, we were going to start getting into a little bit of advanced rocketry, making some more of these machines. And then I had the bright idea of uh, setting up this guy right here, our advanced thermionic fabricator to start auto crafting our, was it the machine cases for thermal expansion? Yeah, so now we can craft those all we want, which is fantastic. Uh, that was one of those things that I was doing manually. We were crafting like the components and I take it over to the thermionic fabricator and actually craft it there manually. But yeah, now that it's fully automated, which is great. Anyway, uh, so we were stuck last episode trying to get into the advanced rocketry stuff because we need to make not, not, oh man, I can't get rid of those. Not these, uh, not that, these machine frames, advanced thermionic fabricator. And the precision assembler? No, we were trying to make, what one was it? The cutting machine? Cutting machine. Yeah, the cutting machine and then all the uh, parts for that. So that requires the machine structure. Yeah, these guys. And each one of those does require us to have the signalum cell full, which it looks like it knows how to craft some of these things. But I think... Yeah, we're going to run into a problem here because there is a big thing. Um, let's go back to this. So machine structure, these guys. Whoop, can't do it while I'm in applied energistics crafting terminal. So, yeah, we need the signal and cell frame full, which requires that, which requires this, which I think we know how to do. But this guy requires us to have the molten lumium. Uh, I have not set up an automation to do this one, and I have not set up an automation to make these flux crystals there is no easy way to do it we will have to make ourselves a fluid transposer and a magma crucible or a melter or something to make this destabilized redstone to fill into a um yeah into a fluid transposer and then we could hook all that stuff up to be automated uh we might actually just go ahead and do that i said i was going to hold off 
But you know what? Getting all of these pieces completely automated is going to be quite nice. So I think I will go ahead and do that, especially now the machine frames that we have are fully auto craftable. If I want to make 10 more of those, I can provided I have the Inori crystal, which is like super easy to do. Yeah. Okay. So tell you what, let's go ahead. We're going to make, um, I think I am going to make two magma crucibles, two fluid transposers, and we'll get those hooked up one specifically to do the molten lumium and one to do redstone stuff. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I made myself uh, two magma crucibles, two fluid transposers. We have upgraded those all the way to the resonant tier and we have full augments in them. Mm hmm. So what we're about to do right now is put some export buses on the back of the flu or the magma crucibles. And we're just going to pump in a bunch of items. Yep. So let's grab some acceleration cards. We need a total of seven of those. Okay. So four of them will go into the redstone one. And then three of them are going to go into here. Plus a crafting card because we're going to craft lumium ingots. Yeah. We're only going to craft those though. If the system doesn't have any, uh, I just told the system how to craft that using the alloy furnace. So lumium, so we can craft these things now whenever we want to, I can just craft up a hundred of them. Yeah. And they can craft just fine. It is this recipe right here. So 310, a silver, four glowstone. Yep. Pretty awesome. So yeah, we can craft those whenever we want to. So those are going to go in here. So this one's going to have redstone, this back one. So I just renamed two of our, uh, interfaces here. So fluid transposer redstone. So we know what that one does and fluid transposer molten lumium. Yep. So they say that as the title. Very good. So now we just need to get some ME wire down here and connect this all up. I think I'm going to need some more of these. Let me craft up like a hundred more of those. Awesome. Let's take a full stack for now. Okay. So those are all be connected up and then we need to find out where to connect this, I guess right here. Oh, you know what? I did miss a, um, smart cable. Let's grab two of those and we'll do the old replacer here. So this one I'm going to replace with the smart cable and this way we'll know how many channels are actually being used up here. And then I guess we're going to poke into the wall a little bit, do another one here. And then we're going to run that cable, uh, down. So we need to go over like one more block, I guess, two more blocks, something like that. And just go straight down. Okay. Very good. And we'll just run that over like so. Awesome. So now everything's hooked up. Um, they should start filling up their inventories full of these things, which they did. And now we need to provide them with power so they can do some stuff. Now we are using applied energistics on the back here. So we're going to have to do a little bit of finagling. Probably we will just use, um, what are those things called? The conduits. Yeah, we have some of these ender energy ones, so that should be fine. So we need to touch. Uh, pretty much all of these blocks here with these. Okay. So I'll place one there and there. They'll take care of the two magma crucibles. We'll get ourselves a flux point. We'll just stick it right here in the corner. Okay. So now the magma crucible or I'm sorry, the fluid transposers have power. Now we can just kind of wrap this up and around like so. And I, it doesn't really matter. I like setting these things so we know where they're being connected. They don't have multiple connections to multiple machines or whatever. And this will be extract. And then I'll take care of the other ones down below. But now that we got those set up, we can grab ourselves some facades from Ender IO as well. And then we can sneakily hide all of those blocks. You can't even tell if they're getting powered, right? So that's pretty cool. So yeah, these are filling up full of the different materials. So destabilized redstone. And then our fluid transposer is full. And then this one's filling up full of the molten lumium. Mm -hmm. So the only thing we need to do is tell these interfaces one item equals the resulting item with the, with the lumium and the redstone. So I'll go ahead and get those patterns hooked up and then we can continue to get these auto crafts going. I might even switch this to redstone blocks. I'm not sure if that matters or not, but anyway, be right back. Well, the only thing that's left to automate would be 
this guy right here, Extended Crafting, Crafting Core. Now, between episodes, I did go ahead and make the rest of these pedestals. Uh, I think we had to make 16 more of them. Yeah, I went and I looked at all the different recipes for the, uh, yeah, the Crafting Core. And this one appears to be the most expensive. And that's to make Fusion Crafting Core. But anyway, I went ahead and I pre-made all the different pedestals that we are going to need in order to make this thing later on. Mm -hmm. But I was just looking through the recipes. Now, there's a bunch of these that we'll probably only do one, so there's no point automating any of this stuff. Yep. Uh, well, Extreme Crafting Table, I don't see us needing to auto-craft that. So that's going to be another manual recipe that we'll do later. Uh, that's like a creative item. So this is another thing that might be interesting. Uh, two draconium blocks turn into the charged draconium. Draconium. I don't know if we're going to automate this. It really depends on how much draconium that we are going to need later on. Uh, but most of the recipes that I do want to automate are four items on the outside and one of them in the crafting core itself. This is the one where that we're looking for right now, the energy cell frame. Um, so yeah, I think we might just go ahead and automate this in such a way where it accepts four items for the outside pedestals and one item for the crafting core itself. Yep. I think that's what we're going to do. So pretty much what we're going to have to do is get ourselves like a chest or something that we can pipe the items into, put an interface on. Then we need to extract those items. Um, probably with a filter filtering the correct item to the crafting core and then everything else. That's not on that filter can go to the pedestals. I think that's probably how we're going to do that. Uh, I believe these pedestals can only hold one item at a time. If I try and right click that on there, they only hold one item. So we don't have to worry about making sure only one item goes to the pedestals. We just need to make sure the correct item goes to the crafting core and the rest of the items go to the pedestals. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of applied energistics hooked up over here, mess around with some of these uh, item conduits, see what I can come up with and see if we can automate the crafting core for the four items plus the one that's being uh, crafted in the center. Okay, guys, so this is what we got going on so far. So we have an interface here going into a chest. On this interface, we have ourselves uh, the pattern to make our to make the hardened cell frame out of an energy cell frame. Yep. So that's all the different parts and pieces that go into this. And what we are doing is we have a conduit here. We're extracting always active. And then on the crafting core, I put into insert priority five. So it's the highest priority on this conduit network with a filter. And we are trying to get ourselves energy cell frames here, right? Okay. So that's happening there. And then the other items are being routed into the cable over here. Priority zero insert. Um, so it doesn't matter where the other items go, just as long as they don't go into the crafting core and the crafting core item doesn't go over there. So the highest priority with the filter that's looking for the specific item should ensure that it goes here first. Now, one more thing that we might want to do on this is click this button. So we, uh, do not push crafting items of inventory contains item. So this should always make sure that we only have one recipe worth of items in here, right? So it'll take the energy cell frame, put it into the crafting core, the other items over here. And then if we're crafting more than one, the next recipe will queue up right here. And that should repeat over and over again. I think that is pretty much all we need to do to get this to work. I didn't try this yet. So we are about to try it together. So if we want to do a hardened cell frame, hopefully this works. I don't know if we can push items from the bottom or whatever, but it looks like we have everything ready to go. So I'm very curious to see, Ooh, and does it get extracted? It does. It does. Everything works beautifully. Ha <laughs> ha. That's great. Okay. So it was pretty simple. Um, I think we could probably utilize the same functionality for, well, I was going to say we could probably utilize the same functionality for making the uh, draconium. The problem is there's going to be free spots available and then it'll try pushing other items over onto those pedestals and then that'll ruin things. Yeah, we could possibly set this thing up in such a way. Nah, I don't even know if it's worth doing. I think we're just going to leave it alone as it is. So we just need to get some more of our conduit facades here to cover this up and make that not look as bad. 
Need one right here as well. And, oh, I guess we are going to need one directly under there. Okay, very good. And then we can just fill in a quartz block like so. So now when we want to craft up those energy cell frames, no, not the energy cell frame, the hardened. Hardened frame. Oop. This thing. Hardened cell frame. If I want to craft up like three of those, let's just try and see what happens. We start crafting up multiple of those. Does the first one. Does the next one. Awesome. Yes, that works exactly as I expected to. So now when we tell the system to craft up the uh, machine casing, I can't remember, machine structure. Yes, if I want to craft up like, I don't know, 40 of those, we should be able to do it provided we have all of the input items. And it looks like we are missing some of them here. Yeah, Rosen is going to be an issue. I really need to figure out a good way to get this stuff. Yeah, definitely a thing that I'm going to need to do. But yeah, it looks like we should be able to auto craft everything now, which is absolutely amazing. So let me go ahead and grab some more of these missing components here. And we'll try crafting up, I don't know, like 50 or maybe 100 of these blocks. And we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So I changed our fraction aiding still here to have these augments auxiliary sieve on it. So it increases the secondary output. I honestly don't know if it stacks up to four or not. But I saw that we were getting like two of these sometimes every time it'd go through the process of doing uh, one recipe. So yeah, we were able to get Rosen this way. I still don't know what we're going to do with this tree oil. Yep, still don't know. Uh, and we don't have a great way to get this resin. So I was kind of looking how to get resin, or I guess uh, Rosen. This is the item that we're trying to get that comes from resin and the fractionating still. This item, uh, yeah, we can saw logs to get like 10 millibuckets of it. I mean, I guess we could do that. And that could be a way that we're just always collecting it. Or uh, there's also the arboreal extractor, which we were using previously. And I feel like that's probably the best way to get it. You just go out, slap it up against, uh, I think it was a spruce tree. And then we can click it a bunch of times with the time in a bottle to make it go a lot faster. Uh, yeah, I still don't know what the best way to go about it is. But anyway, we got some rosin now. So if we tell it to make some machine structure... If we say to make a hundred, can we do a hundred of them? Ooh. Ooh, it looks like we can. So now that we have our fluid transposer set up down below, we are now able to make ourselves fluxed electrum, which we weren't able to do before. So we have to take, uh, what is it? The electrum pulverized version, put it through and infuse it with redstone. And then we have to take the flux electrum blend and then put it with sand and then put it through our induction smelter here. I guess the recipe is on the back. There's another interface back there. Fluxed electrum. Yeah, so we can do electrum blend turns into flux electrum blend and our fluid transposer has redstone in it, the destabilized redstone. And then, yeah, the induction smelter is that flux electrum blend plus sand makes this stuff. So anyway, uh, I am very curious to see how fast this works. Um, I also did go and get myself some Peridot and some Ruby from the respective biomes using the digital miner and instead of sifting for it. Yeah, so in the desert, you can get Ruby. So I took the digital miner out there, set the thing for Ruby, and we got a bunch of that. And then grassland areas, uh, we were able to get the Peridot. And there's a grassland biome just over here. So I went there and then the desert I went, I think it was this one right here in this little area. Yep. And we also got the bonus of getting extra uranium while we were doing that. So more power for our base. Anyway, so machine structure, let's try and craft up a hundred of these. Man, the amount of resources, the amount of crafting that would go involved, that would be involved with this. If you try to do this all by hand, oh my goodness. These things, the 10 electron tubes, I think we can auto craft that now using our thermionic fabricator, the advanced one. So we're probably gonna have to set up a recipe for that eventually. We already have some extras. I think I made a couple of stacks manually the last time that uh, we had to do anything with that or we had to use them for anything. My goodness, there was just so much stuff. All right, we're gonna press that button. We're gonna see some 
auto crafting action happening here. A hundred of the machine structures. Oh, baby. Okay, so I want to say that the auto crafting went off flawlessly, but that's not necessarily true. Uh, over here, the way we had this set up, I was expecting that since we were filtering the energy cell frame, it would go into this thing first, but that wasn't happening. It was ending up over here on one of these other pedestals and it wouldn't accept anything else over here since we're whitelisting uh, one specific item, even though this has a higher priority. So I'm not exactly sure what to do about that as far as like just getting it to work the way it was. But what I did do is I put a filter in each one of these four pedestals that we're sending other items to put a filter on it with the energy cell frame blacklisted. So we're going to have to set two sets of filters, I suppose, in order to get this to work properly going forward. But you know what? It is what it is. It's fine. Um, so yeah, we're whitelisting the correct item in here and we're blacklisting that item from these four over here. And then it seems like everything's going to be working. Okay. So we now have, uh, machine structures. We have 116 of these things. That is super, super awesome that we're now able to do that. Okay. So now that we can do that, can we please move on to actually making a machine now? <laughs> okay. So we want to make a cutting, cutting machine this guy. So we need all of these different parts in order to do it. We have the item IO circuit already to be auto crafted, or I guess we already have one. We need a control circuit. I guess we need to set up recipes for some of these other things. Unless I already did. Oh, look at that. I'm a thinker. I've already pre done all the auto crafting recipes for this. And that is just about done. Awesome. Okay, so now we have that guy. Uh, steel gears is fine. Steel plate is fine. User interface. We don't have that on auto craft. So that is one recipe we will have to make. A user interface. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. This, this, that, this guy, that guy. Okay, so user interface. Uh, we can find a home for that somewhere in our system. Oh, I don't know. How about right here? Okay, so user interface, we should be able to craft that. We need steel gear, two of those. And was it a steel plate? I think that was the final craft that we needed. So now we have everything for a cutting machine. Awesome. Apparently we have another item IO circuit board. Oh, that's right. We were doing a little bit of testing with that last episode, or I guess the episode before, trying to make sure that thing worked. All right, so most of our cutting machine structure is in place. We just needed to get ourselves a motor here. And the option that we have available is not the elite motor. We cannot make this because we need the dilithium crystals. Uh, so enhanced motor is going to be our next go-to. So that requires titanium plates, some titanium rods, and some other various components here. So let's make a recipe for this one, the enhanced motor. And then that requires aluminum coils, easy. That also requires us to have these titanium rods. So we are going to need to make a processing pattern for that, like that, get rid of this. So that's gonna go into the metal press. This guy goes here, cool. So now we have a way to make titanium rods. And then these two guys just need to find a home somewhere in our applied energistics. There's that, there's that. So now when we search for a motor, we should be able to craft enhanced motors. Oh, whoops, I forgot uh, titanium plates need a way to be crafted as well. So titanium plates we can do in a compactor. Let's just do it that way. I did add another interface to this one over here. Uh, so compactor, yeah, I did that because we needed uh, signalum plates. Yep, anyway, uh, so let's craft this guy. Looks like everything's craftable. And there we go, awesome. So now we can craft motors from what's the mod <laughs> Volp is advanced rocketry Volp is library I don't know what what is this one from this is from the library the library mod okay so we have all of that so I think you right click yeah there we go and then the structure is now completed it, I can't remember if this machine hurts you or not yeah, I honestly don't know uh, we do need a point for lux point it might be about time that I create an actual recipe for that maybe i don't know 
Uh, so anyway, that's the power input. We'll just stick the point here, do that. Cool, so that has power. This machine does need to be turned on. You gotta remember to do that. And then it should be good. As soon as we put in items, it should be able to craft stuff. So if we go to cutting machine and we look at the recipes for this particular thing, we can now take one log and turn it into 10 planks, but it takes four seconds. Is it worth doing that? I don't know. It might be worth doing that for some things. I think this is what we're going to have to do though. Uh, basic circuit plates uh, get turned into basic circuits. Yeah, these are going to be fairly important, I do believe, in order to proceed with advanced rocketry. Uh, but you know what? This four second time, I think that is lowered because of the tier motor that we put in there. Let's try, let's just try throwing some logs in there. I don't know. Let's put in like three wood. So it is still going a little slow. Yeah. I mean, you can squeeze more logs out of it if you want to do that. I don't think it's that necessary though. Like the way we have it set up already is pretty good. I just noticed though that our oak wood supply is starting to get low. Yeah. That's been in the thousands for a while. Now we're down to like... Uh, just over a hundred. Hmm. Anyway, we did complete this quest. Let's go ahead and take the top loot chest. We'll claim it and we'll pop it. We get ourselves a barbecue platter. Oh man, that sounds delicious. Okay. Very good. So let's also claim our precision assembler and we get this one, a Sunday roast again. That sounds pretty good. It looks good anyway. Um, so the next machine on the list that we have to do is the crystallizer. So crystallizer, let's take a look at this the crystallizer machine what do we have and what do we need so we're missing three components here we need a user interface we have that control circuit board and a steel plate i know we have that user interface i know we have that and then the final item is that control circuit board which we have an auto craft so we'll just take a minute for that to craft up i should probably look at crafting a few of those because I know like pretty much every one of these advanced rocketry machines is going to need one of those, I think. Anyway, uh, so we can craft this guy now. So a crystallizer. If we go to our hollow thing, our hollow matrix, and we click on this, we should be able to get an idea of the size of this machine. Okay, so it's not that big. We want it right there. Yeah, I think so. So again, output hatch, input hatch, the crystallizer block itself. Uh, does this have two levels? Oh, it does have two levels. Okay, so we need quartz crucibles on top. Okay, well, let me go ahead and craft the rest of this stuff. It doesn't require any motors. Iridium coil, gold coil. Okay, yeah, let me go ahead and craft the rest of this. We'll get this machine hooked up and we'll continue on. Cool, so now we got everything together. We just need to right click on this and there it is. The crystallizer. Awesome. So... Again, we need to turn that on and then we need to provide it the power. We could start sharing these power plugs instead of making, or I guess points, instead of making one for each individual machine. But I kind of like them because you don't have to run wires around. So yeah, I'm going to use them in such a way. So that has power. This is turned on. We are ready to go. I ended up using iridium coils. I think those might be the fastest ones, if not the titanium ones. I'm not actually sure, but I used Iridium for that. Um, yeah, so the Crystallizer, let's take a look. Crystallizer. This block is used to turn dilithium dust into dilithium crystal and silicon into silicon bools. Looks like that's the only thing. So the silicon bool, I assume, yeah, we're going to turn that into silicon wafers, and then those get turned into other various components that it looks like we are going to need the basic circuit. Oh yeah. Yeah. So a circuit basic circuit plate gets turned into that. And that is from a silicon wafer and a precision assembler. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we're going to have to do here. Um, looks like we will get the auto crafting set up for these machines. Uh, we'll, we'll have to do that next time though. We are running out of time for today, but I feel like we made a lot of good progress. Being able to auto craft all the way up to the machine structure, yeah, that's huge. I've been trying to push put that off for a while now for whatever reason. I just felt like it wasn't really that necessary to do, but 
now that we're in advanced rocketry and we need so many of those machine frames, it makes a lot of sense. But anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.